we are doing things a little bit differently today and starting off with completed artwork for a change. Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. I have the Honey Bunny scrapbooking workshop from close to my heart on my desk. I was making this the other night with my customers and I got so busy chatting that I didn't get through it all. So I thought I'd give you a quick look at what comes in the guide, all the cutting directions, assembly, techniques, all of that comes in the workshop guide. So it's a really easy way to make something without having to think too hard about it. I love how this layout turned out. I scrapbooked last Easter on here and actually I had so many photos that I had to use some flip flaps. Now my flip flaps aren't attached because I will attach them once I put my layouts into an album. So until then they just kind of sit with the layout, but I couldn't make up my mind on which pictures to use. So when you can't make up your mind, the easiest answer is flip flaps. Now you may have clicked on this video expecting to see a mess and don't worry, I will not disappoint, it is coming. I am gonna make the third layout in this workshop with you guys and I do mess it up and I'm gonna show you my favorite thing that helps me fix all my mistakes. But before we get there, I have to show you the super cute layout number two. I made this almost the same as the instructions. I just added this cute little gnome thin cut from the Gnomes for Spring, and I just die cut her out of some of the pattern papers and some cardstock. I love how she turned out. I hadn't used her yet, and I thought with all the puddles and everything, it would be the perfect spot to use her. I also used some of the Colorista colored pencils to shade in her hair. I wanted to add some texture to her hair, and that's one of my favorite ways to just spice up some solid cardstock, whether it's animals or people, and just add a little bit extra to it. I also added a little bit of inking to her cheeks to give her some blush as well. I also reversed the orders of the paper so that they were a mirror image of each other because I liked how that looked the best. It's one great thing about workshops, you can always switch things up to suit your preferences. Another great thing is that sometimes they have custom papers in them and this one with the clouds, oh, I wish I could get a full pack of just that cloud paper. It's so awesome. Now I have already pre-cut all my paper. This was for layout number three. I followed the cutting guide. So if you have the cutting guide for this, then you know this is exactly what you should have to get started. And if you don't have the cutting guide, you can actually find it on the website. Uh, when you bring up the Honey Bunny Scrapbooking Workshop, there's a little kind of blue title there that says download the guide and you can use that for free. It's a great way to find more ideas for scrapbooking. And when I'm making this, these kits are still available. So if they are currently available, I will link them down in the description box. I went ahead off camera and ripped all my strips. So one long side on all the strips for both pages. And then I'm going to start sticking these down. So I've removed that die cut circle and I'm working right on the cloud background for the left hand page. And I'm going to put this piece of honey butter down first. And then I'm going to start sticking the other strips to it, leaving about a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that showing. And Basically, I laid them out first just to see the order and see how much space I had to work with. You got lots of extra space there, so you just want to make sure that you're getting them somewhat even. And I am using the ruler on the sides of my Versamat to try and get it as straight as possible. Sometimes they can go on a little wonky. I had to retry here just to make sure that it was straight all the way across. But that's one thing I love about the Versamat is if you're using those measurements, it really helps to get those longer pieces straight from end to end. Now once I get all those attached into place, I'm going to go ahead over to the other side and I decided to stick the cloud paper down first. Now I did end up having to pull it up a little bit to trim off the ends that hung over the edge. So you might want to not stick this down first, but I just thought it was easier so that I could make sure everything was lined up really well with the left hand page. So I don't know, maybe leave the right hand side of the cloud paper not attached all the way down so that you can get your scissors under there and trim it. Uh, that might be, might be the best solution to that issue. Because no matter how hard you try to cut all your strips the exact same length, sometimes they just aren't. <laughs> and they just have to be hand trimmed at the end. 
So I did scooch my pages right next to each other here and I'm trying to eyeball and make sure I get them approximately with the strips at the same height. I'm also making sure to keep my adhesive right along the bottom of each strip so that I can tuck photos into the tops of those strips. Now this frame is part of the die cuts that came in this kit and I love that they're all labeled on the back so if you accidentally get them mixed up I usually pile them into a pile like for layout one, layout two, layout three when I'm cutting and everything but just in case you get them mixed up or they're in the wrong pile I love that they're printed on the back and you can double check. That actually came in handy for my first layout because I had accidentally put one of the scallop pieces in the pile for layout three and I was able to find it and get it back on the right layout. Now I've gone ahead and matted my photos. This is on peach cardstock and it just so happened that it went perfectly with Isabella's outfit. She got this cute little yellow shirt with kind of like coral peachy type pants or shorts and uh, just adorable. These are all park photos, one of our local parks. And since these photos were taken, it's been completely demolished and redone. So I'm really happy that I have these pictures to look back on. I'm going ahead, I am following the guide so far and putting all the die cuts where they're supposed to go. I only put adhesive around the very outside of this frame so that I could tuck this little sun under here, making a sun out of a scallop circle and some banner pieces, which looks super cute. And just tucked in a little file tab and then I have my title banner there as well. I think it's so smart that Close to My Heart designed this in a way that you don't have to use Easter photos on it. Even though it's called Honey Bunny and you saw my first layout was very Easter, my other two are not Easter themed at all and they work beautifully with this paper. I think that's really looking ahead because I don't know about you, but I don't have enough photos from each Easter to do multiple layouts and I don't want to take you know, like our egg hunting photos and make it into three pages. I want to keep that on one double page layout. So I really appreciate the thoughtfulness on that. So you can see I'm starting to bring in the star die cuts. So this was part of the original design and this is where things start to go off the rails. <laughs> I wasn't paying probably as much attention as I should have. I was kind of just following what was supposed to go on the layout, kind of following the same pattern where everything was supposed to go. And I kind of thought, oh, I'll add some stamping at the end to kind of add my own little touch to things. But as I start doing that, the stars start to not make any sense. So you'll see what I mean here in a minute, but this is where I should have stopped and thought about it. And I was just having fun making and gluing things down like we do. And so I'm going to show you how I come back from that. There is a little square of white cardstock in the cutting directions and it's to stick this sticker onto to make like a little journaling spot. I do end up going back and trimming those corners because they just drove me a little bit crazy. So I do go back and trim those off with my scissors. You can see I'm going in with more stars just following the layout guide. And it would have been totally fine if I would have just left it right there. But then I wanted to add my own twist. <laughs> and so I'm going to bring in these park themed stamps. This is a retired set called At the Park. And I don't think I've actually used it yet. I think this is my first time using it. I think it's super cute. And I have so many park photos that I just had to use it. Now I decided I wanted some grass at the bottom because... I wanted to make more of like a little park scene. So I cut some limeade cardstock and I just ripped it down. It's about probably not quite half of an inch, a little bit over a quarter inch high. And I'm instead of just sticking it down on the left hand side here, cause I want to do some stamping. I'm going to go ahead and use my T ruler on my Versamat there and just draw a line with a pencil because I want to make sure that I get my stamping in the right spot so it's not too covered by the cardstock. But if I put the cardstock down first and then stamp above it, it'll look weird. So I'm using this pencil line just as my guide for where to stamp and I'm using intense black. These are more images from that at the park set. Cute little swing set, a little slide. And I just thought it'd be fun to have this little scene around the bottom since there was a lot of empty space on this layout. And that spacing just worked out perfectly. I'm so glad I went ahead and drew that line. 
Now, I felt like it needed something else, and so there's this little wee stamp in there, and I wanted it to be subtle, but not too subtle, so I'm using Glacier ink. The paper is like a Seabrook color, so Glacier's just a little bit darker, and I'm just stamping it randomly around to sort of fill out the scene a little bit more because there wasn't any more kind of icons that I wanted to use in that set. These little clouds I'm bringing in were stamped with Glacier ink on white cardstock, and they're from a current set called In Springtime, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. And it has all these fun spring sort of images, and I thought, even though these aren't spring photos, I thought they were outdoors and they would work perfectly. I have some bees there and this cute little frog. And so of course I need to color them up. I stamped them in intense black so that it didn't matter what I chose to color them up with, but I'm gonna go for the colored pencils. And I am just gonna zoom in here so that you can see a little bit closer up. I colored them super simple. Your coloring doesn't always have to be you know, lots of blending and super intricate. I'm going very, very lightly, especially with this blue, so that I can get kind of that transparent wing-like look. I color it a little bit heavier next to the body to add a little bit of a shadow, but I'm really not worried about doing a bunch of blending. The yellow bodies on those bees, I just colored them in solid. Now for the little frog here, I'm going in with a lighter kind of bright yellow green for his body. I will warn you, I end up ditch in the sky. <laughs> I find some better greens and recolor my frog later. And that was my mistake because I didn't swatch my greens out before I started. I just kind of looked at the end. I'm like, yeah, that looks like it should work. It was okay. The light green actually worked all right. It was close enough to limeade to get away with it. But then I reached for a darker green and it definitely didn't go with the kind of yellow green vibe I had on the rest of the layout. So I end up not being happy with that and deciding to just recolor it. I decided to leave this part in because it's the same kind of coloring technique that I used to color my frog that I actually used on my layout, but I just switched up the color. So I figured it was worth leaving in. Besides, I might as well show you all the mistakes that I made on this layout. I know sometimes it can seem like in videos that we never make mistakes, but I assure you, I definitely do and this time I'm leaving them in. So after attaching my images, I went around and added some yellow dots from the Honey Bunny enamel dots package. And it's now that it hit me that with the clouds and the stars, it looks like a baby layout. <laughs> like it doesn't say park to me. It says like sleepy time, baby nap time. <laughs> so this is my secret weapon undo if you've never used it before you need to get your hands on it this stuff is amazing so here it looks like i'm destroying my page right it's like okay i have liquid all over my page the first time i used this stuff <laughs> it scared me so bad because i actually you can put it right over top of photos and everything and it does not wreck them but it looks like you're wrecking it it has kind of a noxious smell to it so if you're sensitive to smells you might not want to use this but it is magical. It just releases all the adhesive, whether it's the foam dots, foam tape, uh, ATG, it works so good. And I was able just to squirt a little bit under there and then use the little scraper to help lift everything off. I even lifted off all the little dots off of there as well. And there was only like one or two spots where I kind of caught the paper and I didn't wait for the undo to work. And I ripped a little bit, but everywhere else it came off completely perfectly. And this doesn't just work good on your like scrapbook pages and things. I also had a friend remove gum out of the inside of her dryer with it. <laughs> I don't think that's how, how you're supposed to use it, but it worked great and got all the gum off of her dryer. So it has multi, multi use. I use it sometimes for removing labels off of things too. It works really good. So here we are back to a little bit calmer of a layout. Not so busy with all those stars, but I wanna add some more. So I grabbed some mix-in paper. I was missing that yellow that was in the sun and I wanted to have some more points of that yellow. The stars were that yellow and I felt like I just needed a little bit more on there. So I cut these scallop circles with my punch. Every once in a while I'll pull out a punch and use it. Not very often. 
but then I also colored up some more images from that springtime stamp set and I am going to be adding them in here to keep that feeling of outdoor, springtime, summertime, uh, and just kind of make it feel more like a park layout and less like a confused layout that doesn't know if it's nap time or park time. I'm alternating my images too. Some of them are going up on pop dots. Some of them are going on flat just to add to the dimension of the page. And now I'm going back in with some of those dots. I think a couple of them, I might need to go add some liquid glue to them just to make sure that they don't come off. But I wanted to add back in that little bit of dimension from them. So now over on this page, I have my little circle there is going to be the backdrop for my frog. This is the new color of frog. You can see it matches the color palette a little bit better, matches that sunny days banner a lot better. And I'm just moving my dots around, getting them to where I'm happy with them. And that is all I'm going to add. I'm going to leave it right there so it's not so busy, but you definitely get that outdoor park feeling from it and I'm so glad I went back and took off the stars and just kind of dialed it back a little bit. Don't be afraid to do that. If you have some undo in your back pocket, you can fix a lot of things. If you're ready to watch some more videos about using stamps on your layouts, click here on this playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.